Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In this video today, we will be resuming our journey in the subject of safety on ships. And within the subject of safety, we will be first taking the topic of firefighting appliances utilized on board. Amongst these firefighting appliances, we will be first taking over the topic of portable extinguishers that are utilized on board and covering essential topics related to these portable extinguishers. Since portable extinguishers exist in a large variety on board, that is the types and the components which are used for the extinguishing and the extinguishing media. Hence, we will be first taking over the portable DCP extinguisher and portable CO2 extinguisher. So, let us see how a portable DCP extinguisher works. As the name suggests, a DCP extinguisher is a dry chemical powder based extinguisher. That is, the main extinguishing agent is a dry chemical powder. This powder is nothing but a mixture of sodium bicarbonate and magnesium stearate. So, how does this mixture of chemicals extinguish the fire? What it does is, upon being released, it creates a blanket of isolation between the fuel source that is burning at the point of fire and the oxygen that is readily available in the atmosphere surrounding that source. And by creating that blanket, it cuts off the fuel and the oxygen, thereby breaking the fire triangle. And hence, this particular action of withdrawing a fire and then breaking it down and to finally extinguishing it is called the smothering effect or the smothering way of extinguishing a fire. A portable DCP extinguisher is generally 6.3 to 6.5 kgs of empty extinguisher weight. That is the body weight excluding the extinguishing media would be between 6.3 to 6.5 kgs. And the inside content of the container that is the extinguisher can vary depending upon the size of the portable extinguisher from 4.5 kgs of DCP powder to 9 kgs of DCP powder. Thereby, the total weight can vary between 10.5 to 15 kgs of weight. The inside propulsion medium which is used to expel the DCP out of the container that is the fire extinguisher is a CO2 cartridge and also depending upon the quantity of the DCP that has to be expelled out, the content of the CO2 may vary. This CO2 cartridge can vary from 60 grams of CO2 to 200 grams of CO2 depending upon the ratio of the DCP that has to be propelled out. In use, ideally, the portable DCP extinguisher should create a throw of 5 meters, but in practical, this throw is between 3 to 4 meters. That is, upon using a portable DCP type extinguisher, the person who is holding the extinguisher has to be in that 4 to 5 meter range of the fire, that is the source of the fire. And this DCP jet that is being expelled out has to last at least for a duration of 20 seconds. This particular type of extinguisher can be used on class A, B, C, D as well as electrical fires and that is why it makes the portable DCP extinguisher versatile because unlike the other portable extinguishers, DCP extinguisher is heavily utilizable under different kind of circumstances and thus versatile in approach. Also, what is important to know is that the body of this extinguisher is made out of solid drawn steel and in order to provide the inner strength as well as smoothening effect, the inner coat is created out of zinc coating. The overall dimension of this particular extinguisher can go up to 585 mm in height. That is the larger variant in which we have 9 kg of DCP. And when it comes to diameter, it can be as much as 180 to 190 mm of dia of the extinguisher. Now, after understanding this much, let us now understand how the extinguisher works. What happens is that like all the other portable extinguishers, there would be a safety pin that would be incorporated into the handle, thus making sure that when the extinguisher is not utilized, and we can physically check that it is in safe condition. So, first we have to pull the safety pin out. By doing so, we are allowing the handle to pivot about its turning point and thus stimulate the further action. Once this handle is triggered by pressing it, it pushes against the spring action, the pin which is inside it to the downwards direction. 
and by doing so the pin further ruptures the ruptured disc which is present inside the structure and thereby allows the CO2 which is present inside the cartridge to escape out. This CO2 which is expelled out in the gaseous form within the container itself into the outer rim of the container would then pressurize the DCP then being pushed and then this DCP is projected outwards through the tube and then passing through the pipe and then thereby being directed out of the nozzle. That is first the tube climbing upwards and then going out through the hose and the nozzle and then finally being directed towards the seat of the fire that is the fire area. By doing so the DCP would reach the ultimate destination that is the seat of the fire and start creating the blanket effect. Unlike a few other extinguishers of portable nature it is easier to hold the hose and the nozzle of the DCP because the temperature, pressure and other factors that govern the action of this particular extinguisher are not harmful to the person operating it or are not hazardous to the person operating it. Now, it is also important to know that DCP has a discharge efficiency of 95% in total. That is, if I am to assume that 10 kgs of DCP powder is there inside the extinguisher, then out of that 9.5 kgs of DCP powder at least would be discharged out. And the service pressure which is there inside the container during the discharge action taking place can be up to 15 bar. But accounting for the factor of safety and the redundancy, the container would be tested at least at a pressure of 37 bar during the annual and the other testing occasions. In terms of identity, the DCP extinguisher, even though the body would be the same red color like the other portable extinguishers, would have a distinctive blue color strip upon its face and thereby it is easy to identify that there is a DCP extinguisher in place. And because of the nature of the action that is the smothering effect that is being utilized with the help of the blanketing that is being created on the top of the oil source and between the oxygen, this extinguisher can be effectively utilized in open as well as closed spaces. That is if the fire is restricted within a certain region, it does not matter that the source is open or closed, it can still be used and that is where the versatility factor is also visible. Now let us shift our attention to the other portable type extinguisher available in hand that is the portable CO2 extinguisher. The portable CO2 extinguisher also, also uses the methodology and the principle of smothering effect to kill down a fire. However, the primary difference between a DCP and a portable CO2 extinguisher both using the smothering effect is that the CO2 occupies the volumetric proportion of the space that is available within the region of the fire. Whereas the DCP creates a blanket on the surface of the source of the fire. So what happens is that if we allow too much area for the CO2 to expand that is in the final discharge region where we are discharging the CO2, the smothering effect would be killed down and the CO2 would not be as effective. Hence what happens is that the CO2 usage, the portable CO2 usage is restricted to smaller and closed compartments. And that is why you will find these extinguisher in areas such as the control room. The CO2 extinguisher is also helpful in different types of fire extinguishing but covers mainly the class B liquid surface and the electrical fire. A major difference again between the DCP and the CO2 extinguisher is that when the DCP extinguisher acts, because of the powder being discharged and covering the entire surface, when it is used on an electrical fire, it ends up positively or possibly destroying the electrical media that has to be extinguished. So, it is in an unrecoverable state. But the CO2, because it leaves no residues onto the surface, is something which we can use still if possible and if the state allows so to save the electrical appliances from completely burning out and then can also utilize it further from a state of recovery. Like the other extinguishers, the body of the CO2 extinguisher would generally also be between the range of 6.3 to 6.5 kg empty weight and within that would contain 4.5 kgs of CO2 in a compressed state. The pressure inside the container would be at a range of 53 bar for a temperature of 20 to 25 degree Celsius depending upon the size of the container. And the container would be visibly coated 
with a black color strip in contradiction to the DCP extinguisher that was blue coated. In manner similar to the other extinguishers, the portable CO2 extinguisher is also supposed to create a jet throw of at least 3 to 4 meters, ideally going up to 5 meters and for a minimum duration of 20 seconds. As discussed earlier, the CO2 also creates a smothering effect for killing down the fire. The body of the CO2 extinguisher is also of solid drawn steel and coated inside with a layer of zinc. Where this differs with the other extinguishers is also the parts that are involved in the extinguisher. Namely the handle and the pin would be the same but inside would be again a rupture pin which can be triggered by a rupturing disc or by a handle trigger action and then would also contain a control valve inside to control and regulate the discharge of the flow of the CO2 when it is being released through the hose. The other elements are the hose as usual and the distinctive horn like discharge nozzle. This horn like discharge nozzle or the horn of the discharge is primarily used for two major functions. First of all, it allows for the expansion of the CO2 in its gaseous state so that the volumetric occupancy when being discharged is higher and also it contains a discharge holding handle for the operator. What happens is that because CO2 is at a temperature of minus 66 degrees Celsius when being discharged as the media for extinguisher, it becomes impossible for the person operating the CO2 extinguisher to hold the nozzle or the hose directly. So, the handle on the surface of this particular horn would allow the person that is the operator to hold it safely and thereby also operate the extinguisher. Now, let us see how the extinguisher works. Either with the help of rupturing disc on the top or with the help of the handle, the pin is pushed down which then ruptures the disc inside and thereby allows the CO2 which is filled inside in two states. That is the top part occupies the vapor form and creates the pressure simultaneously on the liquid CO2 which is available inside in the compressed state and thus this CO2 is pushed upwards and then is allowed to gush out from the hose and thereby from the discharge horn and then reach the final area of firefighting for the smothering effect. As we can see that the state from the inside that is the liquefied CO2 would change from the pathway of the transmission of the CO2 and would finally be in the gaseous state upon the discharge. The inside tube is also cold drawn in nature and should be of sufficient diameter to make sure that there is no excessive back pressure within the extinguisher. It is also important to know that because the CO2 portable extinguisher contains CO2 in a pressurized state, hence if it is exposed to a high temperature region, say in case of a fire in the simultaneous compartments or within the vicinity of the extinguisher itself and if it is still stored, so the temperature of the body will go up and it will also propel the temperature of the CO2 stored inside to a higher temperature thereby increasing the pressure and thus creating a hazard for bursting of the extinguisher body or the container and thus there has to be a safety device which is a pressure release device that has to be mounted on the throat of the body so that in such a case of over pressurization the CO2 can be safely discharged and thus not create any damage further or any physical hazard to either the operator or anybody in the range or the vicinity of the extinguisher. In addition to the action, construction, the utility and the different features of the portable extinguishers that we just explained, it is also important to know that these extinguishers contain distinguishable stickers that are being planted on the body and also in the vicinity of the region of the extinguisher. These stickers are extremely helpful for people usually unfamiliar with the scope of operation of these extinguishers as they provide you clear cut instructions for the operation of the extinguisher as well as different aspects such as the nature of the extinguishing media that is being used inside the extinguisher for example the CO2 or the dry powder, the nature of the scope of the extinguishing media that is where it can be used for example a CO2 extinguisher can be used on live electrical equipment safely and also on flammable liquids and also the scope of media where it cannot be successfully used or has lesser success rate of extinguishing. For example a CO2 extinguisher would not be as effective or not useful on fires that are originating from 
solid surfaces such as wood, paper, textiles, metal fires, etc. And hence, these stickers have to be in good condition and properly planted onto the surface. The fire extinguisher main sticker, that is the visible sticker, can be mounted on the body and it is also mounted in the vicinity of the region where the fire extinguisher is stored, thereby allowing a visible head that is alert for the user for the availability of such an extinguisher in their vicinity. I hope that the comprehensive and detailed explanation of these two extinguishers cover all possible doubts that can exist in your mind regarding these two portable extinguishers. And if any further doubt still exist, please feel free to drop down in the comment section and put across your doubts. Also, do like and subscribe our content and our page and share with your kind colleagues in order to provide us the right support and motivation to grow our page further. Thank you.